Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today, my guest is Barry M. Putt Jr. Welcome, Barry. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you, Don. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to talk with you today. Yeah, I'm going to learn a lot today because I have no idea about any of this, but I, you are also an author, which we're totally going to talk about. I admire authors so much, but let's talk about how you make radio dramas. Is that what you would call it? An audio drama? I would say audio drama. That's kind of the uh, the current term, but there have been a lot of terms. People think of it, know it as radio theater, um, yep, radio drama, but really the the current term is is audio drama. And that was popular before TV, right? Isn't that what? Okay, that People was kind of sit around TV. the radio. Yeah, that was kind of the TV of its day. It actually started in nineteen a hundred years ago in nineteen fourteen. That was the first uh, broadcast of a dramatic um, story on 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 the radio. It was that was the early days of radio. Um, you know, in the United States. Right. And then I would say in the 1920s through the late 1940s was kind of the heyday of, of um, audio drama. They had quite a few series um, that would last, you know, 10 years, 10 to 15 years, wow. was not, not unheard of. I think the longest one la- lasted about 30 years. So, um, and then, you know, when TV kicked in, um, in the late 1940s, uh, that that slowly, um, you know, people were drawn to television a bit yeah. more. It reduced, you know, the audience. But um, and then officially, that was the golden era of audio drama um, up until the early '60s. And then in the 1960s, it went into the silver the silver age of audio drama. The stories were a bit more gritty, um, a little bit more. Um, open-ended in terms of how they ended and more realistic. Um, and then there was a couple of other eras after that, but audio drama has really been with us all along. Okay. Um, and it has had, it, it's just had a smaller, like kind of, you know, focus group of listeners. And I would say maybe about 10 years ago with, you know, with podcasts mm-hmm. uh, becoming more popular, um, it has really kind of, uh, found a new kind of renaissance or rebirth and people are, you know, are listening to it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. What made you want to, okay. So I can't really say bring it back because you just said it never went away entirely, but what made you want to make it popular again or to where it was just as valid as TV? Let's see. Um, Well, I started um, at one point (laughs) writing a, a stage plays. And I had a short, short, short stage place, but, a, you know, one acts about a half an hour at maximum. And up until that point, I had actually found theaters to produce them all, except for one, one play that I couldn't find a production for. So um, I had been, uh, my aunt introduced me to audio drama or old time radio um, as, um, as a teenager. And I thought back on that and I said, well, why don't I, adapt this into an audio into an audio drama Mm -hmm. um and i did and then i submitted it to um you know a a production company and two months later they sent me a contract so um so and meanwhile it had been well over a year i had submitted it you know as a stage piece um you know i didn't i didn't get anywhere so that was kind of my introduction into audio drama and Um, I hope I'm answering your question. You are. Yeah. It's fascinating to me because now thinking of podcasts now, like that is, is it similar to you in your mind as a podcast? Like if somebody did a podcast, that was a story. Yeah. I would say that a podcast is really just the, the mechanism that we listen to them by, just you know, um, TV versus a film in a theater, um, Mm -hmm. versus, you know, the radio, like, right. Those are all different, um, mechanisms where we where we get stories from Mm -hmm. and uh, you know audio drama on on a podcast um is the same as audio drama on on the radio um or some now they're i think more something more a little bit newer is on youtube they're uh putting audio dramas on youtube okay yeah Um, because i don't really listen to the radio i listen to programs or you know youtube or 
um, other, you know, at, where, where Apple, Spotify. So right. what, where are you, where are you doing this? What, what radio stations or how do people find these kind of programs? So, well, I did, um, I did start out on the, on the radio, but like if we're today, um, I've, they're in many different places. Okay. So, uh, some, they are sold by, by companies. I have um, a new adapt adaptation of Beauty and the Beast coming out later this uh, year on CD and also uh, streaming and digital download through Blackstone Audio. So the, you know, the larger uh, audio book companies do them. They still are on the radio. They are, um, and a lot of them are online. Okay. So, um, but definitely there's, di there's distributors uh, that will, you, 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 I'm not really a producer, right? I'm more of the writer. Okay. But, um, but I do know, you know, the companies that I've worked with, that there's a couple of distributors that will put them on all of those platforms for you, you know, Spotify, Apple, mm -hmm. um, Audible. Uh, and I know that there's others that I'm not thinking of. But yeah, there's, there's a, a million. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> right, right. So, okay, I honestly, this is probably a super stupid question. Uh, was Beauty and the Beast a book before Disney made it or... Okay, it was. So was, you yeah. anybody can can have the the rights to it and do what they want with it. You don't have to go through Disney or anything like that. It's actually a story uh, written in the eighteen hundreds. Oh, by, uh, it's a French story. Oh, uh, written, you know, originally in French, and I think i I took the uh, I took the original, an English translation of it. Um, so this is a it's a fun story for kids. Um, it has some, you know, fun, fun characters. I think there's two mice in it, um, Roqueford and Colby, um, and they're kind of rascal. <laughs> <laughs> you know? so, um, oh, that's funny. Yeah. So anybody, um, because it's in the public domain, mm -hmm. you can, you know, whatever. Oh, that's awesome. So do you do musicals or humor comedies or do you stick with totally more, more stories and dramas and like, do you do murder mystery type things? I'm kind of, I'm rather diverse as a writer. So, but yeah, in audio dramas, let's see, I've done sci-fi. I've done um, some kind of quirky comedy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do a Western. Oh, yeah. And some drama. So okay. I, I haven't done a musical in audio drama, but I, um, I have done uh, some musicals and I'm actually currently um, co-writing a musical. Oh, um, a fun. So, okay. So let's talk about your, your, you have written how many books now? So officially there are two books that are out. Okay. And there are two that I have a contract for. So two that I'm actively writing and one I'm about to start to co-write. So, so is writing your passion? Is that why you're here on this earth is writing it or yeah. It definitely yes. <laughs> it makes you smile. So why did you pick Alice? Like I don't know how old you are, and you don't have to tell me. But what did you just always like that show? Had you seen it on reruns? Like what? Why Alice? Yeah, I had seen it on reruns growing up, and mm -hmm. I just um, and I I just really liked it. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a little bit more of a story to it than that, and and how I actually came to write it. But that's one of the reasons why. Um, so I'll tell you. Uh, you briefly. can tell the story. We've got time, whatever. <laughs> okay. okay. So I was, um, I had a book, written a book proposal for a book, on, an, an instructional book on how to write audio drama. Okay. And I shopped that around to different publishers. I shopped it to this one publisher. And at, while they were reviewing my book proposal, uh, I looked around the other things that they did. And they mostly did uh history of film and, and TV and, and radio. So uh, a lot of like um, books on different TV shows. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, you know, I, I love those kind of books. Um, and I, I wrote down like a short list of books that I would like to see done that had never been done on different TV shows. Um, and ultimately what happened was they rejected um, my, my book proposal. So they liked the writing, but they said that they didn't think that they were the right publisher for that book. Um, and the next day I sent them a pitch letter on the Alice book. The next day after that, they they said that they loved the idea and they would send me a contract to write the book. So it was a bit unexpected. Yeah, like a roller coaster. 
<laughs> You're like let down back up <laughs> but that's how that's kind of how um it all came about okay so what did you write about what is the book about so the book is a is a history okay uh, fun history <laughs> um of uh of the feature film, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, which uh, was directed by uh, Martin Scorsese. Mm -hmm. And um, then it was, spin it was spun off into the TV series, Alice. Okay. And Alice was spun off into the TV series, Flo. So Alice is, you know, the main character in right. the movie. And Flo is um, a, a waitress friend yeah. of her. Kiss she my went. grits. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I remember the most. <laughs> so um yeah so there's a there's a history of uh individual chapters on each one of those uh productions then there's um a fan a fan quiz there's um and other information and uh tidbits about each of those productions and and episode guides for for each of the productions as well oh my gosh so are you do you think you're an old soul <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. I like nostalgia and older things. Is that, I mean, was your aunt very influential on you in your life? Is that, did she get you hooked on old shows too? Or was that just the radio stuff? I think that we both liked them. Um, I remember at that time, I really liked I Love Lucy. Oh yeah. So, um, and I know that uh, we played this game Canasta, which I heard about on I Love Lucy. And I I asked my aunt, I said, well, what, you know, do you know what this is? And she's like, oh yeah, we used to play it when we were little. So um, I think that we kind of had that connection of liking those things. And then she definitely introduced me to, to, to more, you know, but I did um, more in that area. Like I never listened to audio drama um, until she, until she introduced me to yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think is the biggest challenge with audio drama? Because people are so visual people. I mean, as humans, we're just wired that way. So what do you think is the biggest challenge when you're trying to write something for people to really picture in their mind? Okay. Wow. Yeah. I like, that's a great question. So I think that just, I think the core of audio drama is right, telling stories just through sound mm -hmm. and making sure that you can, because the audience is kind of a co-collaborator in a way in audio drama, right? They they get to, you present the dialogue and, you know, the, the story, but they get to uh, decide for themselves what the characters look like, how the actions are unfolding, what the setting is. So I don't really feel like that's a challenge, um, but it is something that's very distinct to audio mm -hmm. drama. Um, yeah. And you do need to make sure that at the beginning of each scene, you clarify where where the scene is taking place in a, you know, a, a authentic, not expository, you know, like, oh, we're in the bakery right now. You know, that is <laughs> <laughs> very descriptive. So do you have, does it start off with a narrator, like how a book would be? And it'd just be like, on a beautiful morning, you know, here comes... Amy and Amy's walking into the delicious aroma of this bakery. I mean, like, is that it? Does it start off like that? No, it, but no, I <laughs> you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're terrible. It's not, <laughs> but they used to, they, you know, in the, the golden age, the golden era of audio drama, they did a lot of that narration to kind of quicken, you know, quicken yeah. thing. But, um, you know, the, the modern, the modern feel is to make everything in the moment and actively happening in the moment. I guess that is the difficulty for the writer to right. make sure that it's in the moment and that, you know, the exposition backstory and things that the characters would inherently know come out in, in the story in a way that they would need to say, and that does in, that is not for the audience, right? You don't want that because then it will feel kind of stilted. Right. So that's probably the one thing that as a writer uh, would be, difficult um but yeah you just kind of plop you just start the story uh right in the moment you know with some kind of action going on and um there are some audio dramas that do use narration mm -hmm. um and narration can be a really exciting thing it kind of gives you kind of a personal connection like you're especially if the if the character that's narrating it is the main character in the story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're kind of getting a little bit of insight and it's interwoven throughout but by and large um 
it's not it's not used as it used to be okay uh, or just in the moment type of storytelling how do you get your people your actors or um whatever you would call them the the people that are doing the the story the, the, the voice actors um so i don't as a writer i don't really deal with that but okay. the okay but the companies that i work with do um one company that i've worked with for i think it's 14 years now um they they have a, a repertory company of actors that perform, you know, that they can pull from. And then sometimes they'll go out and get new actors. I um, There's a company, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. They mostly use, um, that's a company in Canada, actually. Um, and they, um, they have a couple of actors that they use and then they hold auditions. Um, I worked for a company okay. in China uh, doing English language audio drama. And they used... Um, in, you know, uh, actors that were happened to be in China that that spoke. I don't really know too much more about that because I don't. I don't. Yeah, I understand now. Really You're writing it all, and mm -hmm. then you pass it off, and then they find the actors and they do all the rest. You just hand them the script that you've yeah. written. Yes. Wow. So sometimes on the, on the series that I write for, um, I do. I'm really writing the script, although it's, certainly it's for the audience. Um, my main person I'm writing it for is the producer, and then they'll give me feedback to rewrite. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it's their approval um, that lets it move forward into production. Right. So where do you get your inspiration? Where, what, Who or what inspires you? Um, it, it, you know what? It's different depending on, on what um, area that I'm writing in. So I guess for audio drama, mm -hmm. I have... I've done a lot of adaptations in audio drama, including my uh, Western mm -hmm. that I do. Uh, it's actually based on a dime novel series. Uh, however, um, we're, we've, we've done three seasons and we're, I'm about to start work on the fourth season, but I always pick a dime novel and then I just kind of use the, a core idea from it. And then I kind of go from there on my own. So they're very liberal adaptations but i have done some very uh close to the book adaptations yeah um, uh do you have are there a lot of people that you look up to that are in the acting world or that are in the screenwriters like is there anybody that you try and emulate or are you your own deal there are writers that i that i really like um and i definitely in audio drama i definitely I can't think of anyone specifically right now, but I definitely <laughs> have listened to audio dramas because uh, I think it's important to be aware of what's going on out there. Yeah. Uh, you know, what new trends are coming or what, you know, just because it it may be old doesn't mean that it is not innovative, um, you know. Yeah. So there's a lot you can learn from other, from other people and their style. Right. Um, yeah, because pe keeping people's attention is difficult these days. You know, everything's a short and a real and a, you know, every you get got to spill it in 30 seconds or your their your their attention is gone. So, there's got to be a lot of writing tricks that you have learned or ways of keeping people's attention. How do you do it? I I think that um uh, making sure that there's always something exciting going on that we, that you start with a clear concept and a, a clear character with a with a goal and obstacles and make sure that they're keep facing those obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that the more that you can do that, the more engaging that that the story will be. And I you're definitely I I agree that the audio dramas today basically are under a half an hour. They're a half oh, an hour. Okay. Um although my the beauty and the beast, that's that's an hour. I have done some feature length. Those tend not to be on the radio, though. Those okay. are the ones that, that would be for purchase somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, that's that's essentially what I keep in mind when I'm when I'm writing this the scripts. So let me pick your brain. Are you worried at all about AI with being uh, a writer? Do you worry that a robot is going to take over your job? No, no. Good. <laughs> I, I think it's a tool mm -hmm. that that we're at the beginning of understanding how how to use. Yeah. Um, 
and that yeah, there's some concerns around it. But I think that the more we get uh, familiar with it, uh, the you know the more that we can see how we can use it to our advantage. I I personally um, I don't think I've used it yet. I'm trying to think, I might have. Well, no, I have, but in but not in writing, in transcribing. Uh, mm -hmm. some interviews and things like that I've used it for that but not as a writer yeah uh, you know per se with my, my writing yeah I I just find it interesting I think it's very helpful AI can be you know whether it's doing research or helping you write the notes I use it sometimes for my notes for my podcast show notes it's tedious it's takes a long time and then I copy and paste like nobody's business so if there's something that's just gonna type it all out for me Yes, please. I would like <laughs> those three hours of my life, you know, to be lived not at my computer. So um, I I don't think that AI is going to take over people's creative abilities or, you know, but there's a lot of concern about that. And older people, they're worried that their jobs are going to be gone. It's like, just calm down. <laughs> right. it's, it's, it serves a good purpose too. Okay. So you've, you've written some books and that's huge. And then you also work on these audio dramas. Do you have anything else in your bucket list that you want to still do that you haven't done? I, oh, yes, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please share. <laughs> so I have done some um, film and TV. I would like to do more of that. Um, I have a story right now, a pl uh, the play of which will be coming out. Uh, I, it will be published on July 1st. Mm -hmm. And I have a screenplay version of that play that um, that I am uh, developing further and going to start to uh, though I believe there'll be an in industry reading of it this this fall um, and I'm hoping to get a production of that in, in the in the future so I'm that's my a, a new project that I'm that I'm working on right now yeah you know, I think of it as just being something that's so vulnerable for you. You know, you just lay it all out there. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into this play or book or whatever, and then you hand it off to somebody and like, here's everything that I've been doing for the last year or whatever, and just so hopeful that they're going to find the the beauty in it that you have. It's like one of your kids, you know, it's just, you put right. so much into it and you want it to be received so well. So it's gotta be a very vulnerable thing, handing off your work to a publisher, hoping that they will like it. Yeah. yeah that, that is such an intriguing question because while you were asking, I'm thinking in different ways. I'm thinking, okay, well, for the audio drama, I know the producer, although unless it's a new one, Right. If it's mm -hmm. someone I haven't worked with before, then you don't know. But yeah, and with the books, um, it's the audience. You never know yeah. once it's published, you know. And the same, I guess, with um, yeah, the film and uh and and uh TV and stage, all three of them. Mm -hmm. Um and some of them, like stage, you can sit in the in the audience of your play and get a reaction, but film and TV not really right you know you you could go to a movie theater mm -hmm. and see it but you're not really getting like an immediate reaction to it right so you could have to hear about it you know through comments and things like that yeah so. and people are can be brutal like people get their keyboard commandos and they can just be like, this is the worst thing I've ever read. You know, give me my, that time of my life back. People get, so that's scary to just throw yourself out there. You know, it's really, I can't imagine to put your efforts out there like that. I mean, I do with my podcast, but it's not my um, means of living. You know, <laughs> if people hate it, I'm not out of paycheck or anything, but yeah, that's just such a feeling of vulnerability. I, but I do commend you for, for writing books. I just think that that is a huge feat. I think it is amazing that you can put all of those thoughts in order and in a way that can, people can just absorb and take something from it's amazing. It's a really cool skill. Okay, thank you. You know, and it is. It's kind of like a puzzle. Um, I, I'm because right now in in the book category, I'm mostly writing nonfiction, um, and I'm one of the books I'm currently writing um, is called "The Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew on Film, TV, and Stage," and it's about uh, there'll be a chapter 
on every production from the 1930s all the way up until present day. And I'm realizing that, so nonfiction writing is kind of like a puzzle that you put together, except you don't have the pieces yet. So, right, you have to find them through research. Mm -hmm. um, and that project has been a really um, exciting one. Um, and one that I've constantly had to um, reassess my understanding of how long it will take, I guess. I just today interviewed the hundredth person for the book. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm now writing the book, but as I write each chapter, I also reach out again to, or, or uh, to people that are um, associated with that production to see if I, to see if they will, um, you know, be responsive and talk with me. So um, you never know what's going to happen on each, you know, in each chapter and some chapters there, you know, there's no one that you can talk to, but um, yeah. Yeah, that one has been, I, I think part of what I really like about writing is, is that you learn as you go, even mm -hmm. though I guess you're kind of, and yet you are kind of an expert in that, you're still learning all the time. And that's, that's what I find um, kind of exciting about. Oh, uh, for sure. Have you had a writer's block ever? I, I kind of don't believe in writer's block, but with that, Ooh. I will tell. But with that, I will also say that sometimes when I'm plotting out a story and um, there's something that I, there's an issue that I'm trying to work on. And I, if I if I can't figure it out in a, in a couple of days, that's probably kind of that might be writer's block. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll just say, OK, it's time to move on to, to another part of the story. And just uh, come back to it. And then I just I think you're just subconsciously thinking of and you don't know it. And those answers always come down the line. But if you if you focus too much mm -hmm. in the moment, it's just not going to happen. It's just time to move on to something else. And it does get a little frustrating, you know, when you yeah. can't figure it out. But um, I've always found that it comes, it just needs its own time, you know, to do so. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, they say that even for like the elderly, if a name won't come to them or whatever, just stop thinking about it start thinking about something else or take a nap. And then when you wake up, it'll just be there. You know, it's like when you really try too hard and focus, it's just, it's never going to come. Your brain's just like, nope, <laughs> not <laughs> <Yes>. happening. <laughs> so do you do social media to promote your stuff or are you on social media at all? I am. I have a website. Okay. Um, and then I have, um, I'm most active on Facebook in terms of the, I guess, real you know, social media. I do have an Instagram Twitter or X. Um, yeah, nobody knows sorry. what to call it. <laughs> and then I think I have something else that maybe we haven't talked about, but I don't remember. Is there another major one? Social media? <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. Oh, are you on TikTok? Oh, I am on TikTok. Too. Are you? What I do you do on there? there? Or do you post anything? I'm not, I, I have an account there, but I don't, I don't post very frequently on yeah. there. Yeah. I do post yeah, just some little videos, usually about a project that, um, was just released or some or something like that. Yeah. But Facebook, I mean, I mean, uh, please. So what did you say is the date of the Beauty and the Beast that it's getting released or whatever? There isn't a hard release date, but it's oh. be late fall. I would say end of November. Oh, early, okay. Early December. Um, and okay. it will be through Blackstone Audio um, is who, who will be publishing it. Awesome. Well, I learned a ton from you today. I seriously really had no idea how it all worked. And I'm sure that was <laughs> very clear, <laughs> but I think it's awesome. And I'm excited for you. You've got so many things going. That's just awesome. Always using your brain and being creative. Very cool thing. So um, yeah, I'll put everything about where to find you and all your stuff in the show notes, but thank you, Barry, for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's been fun talking with you, Don. Thank you so much for you know having me on your program. Of course. Yeah, you bet. And we'll talk soon, okay? Okay. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>